On Wednesday evening, I asked our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study folks if there was one piece of advice that you would want to give to this graduating class in a sentence, what would you tell them? And here are some of the responses. Don't be surprised by your first paycheck. <laughs> Say thanks to mom and dad. Another one said, said thanks to mom and dad. A third one said, say thanks to mom and dad. <laughs> if you haven't already graduate, uh, say thank you to mom and dad. They've done a lot for you. Several verses were quoted. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 was shared. Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Wherever God is leading you, do it for the Lord. One said, better decisions lead to fewer regrets. Amen? Make wise choices. Make wise choices. And then we had our brother Billisms. You need to pull out your pen, highlighter, and mascara and write this down. And Joy Shannon reminded us a story that Brother Bill shared about when he was going off to college. And one of the things he shared as he was heading out is his father told him, You're taking one of the most precious things that I have. And he said, All my bags are stuff. I'm going. What state? And he said, You're taking my name. Just remember, graduates, wherever you go, you're carrying and bearing your family's name. And then another Billism, Pastor Emeritus Brother Billism, comes at you like this. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you than you, than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Did I get that right, Miss Cindy? All right, good. Thank you. I worked all week on it. Lots of wisdom from people in our church that we love and cherish dearly. But I think it's fitting for us to turn to the pages of Scripture and to listen and to lean into some wisdom from the half-brother of Jesus, James. If you find the book of James, head to chapter 1. James chapter 1, where we're going to spend just a little bit of time together this morning as we listen in to some wisdom from Pastor James. Old camel knees. Church history called him camel knees because he would spend so much time on his knees in prayer, his knees became like leather, and so they nicknamed him Old Camel Knees. Wouldn't you like that nickname? It'd be fantastic. So we turn to Old Camel Knees, the book of James, chapter 1. He's writing to a church that is scattered because of persecution that has fallen upon the church. And he is a loving, kind, gracious pastor desiring to lead his flock. And he has some specific words for them that I think are appropriate for us right here and right now. And if you found your way to the book of James chapter 1, you please rise out of reverence for the reading of God's word. If you haven't found James, I'm a kind and gracious and loving and caring pastor, and I'll put it on the screens for you, all right? And the word of God tells us this beginning with verse 19. My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth in the evil that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror. Verse 24 says, For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently 
phaereo, you examine it carefully, intently, and you see the perfect law of freedom, and you persevere in it. It's not a forgetful here, but a doer of works. This person will be blessed in what he does. Would you pray with me? Father, it's in the name of Jesus I pray that out of the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth, they'd be acceptable to you. But Lord, my aim isn't only graduates today. Father, these words fall on all of our hearts, not to be hearers only, but to be doers. So God, I pray that we would leave this place changed more into the image of your son, Jesus, desiring to do something. Lord, that's the desire of our hearts as we follow after you. To make an eternal difference. That's why you've left us here. So Lord, may we listen carefully to what you have for us now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 19, we just going to begin to walk through in James chapter 1, but I need to give a little bit of context in verses 16, 17, and 18. It would be important for us to know where he says, do not be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. I love that we do. Last week we have parent-child dedication, all these cute little babies up here, and mothers dedicating their children to the Lord, and fathers dedicating their children to the Lord, getting ready to send them out wherever they go, and then you stand here the following week, and you think, oh my, those two weeks really connect, that you dedicate yourselves and your babies before the Lord, and now this moment, this good thing that came into your life. I always love how the Gospel of Luke said that Jesus was a holy thing. And the Gospel of Luke tells us that. You can't say that about your baby, and I can't say that about my baby. They're not holy things, maybe holy tares, but not holy things, right? <laughs> but it's a good gift from God. Every good gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows in a world Aren't you grateful that the Father of lights doesn't change? He's immutable, Malachi says. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He will always be the same. His characters, his moral are always the same. But verse 18 says, by his own choice, he gave us birth, birth, by the word of God so that we would be the kind of first fruits of his creatures. So by birth, we've been born again by what? The word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Paul writes over in the book of Romans. So we have this new birth, but then now he, he shifts and he pivots in the verses that we just read. It's now about, okay, you've been born again by the word of God, but that belief ought to impact your behavior. Being a Christ follower, now following Jesus, ought to lips and service match. It is belief and behavior now working together. And that's where he says in verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters, understand this. I need you to get this. Everyone should be swift to listen. Quick to listen. In the context of of hearing God's word. Quick to listen. Graduates, family members, friends, neighbors, associates, church family, deacon body, Sunday school teachers, facilities management, whoever you are today, this message is for all of us. We need to understand in our fast-paced, ever-changing world, we need to be so very quick to listen to God's word. 
Are we quick to listen to God's word? All the distractions that we have from smart devices and all the entertainment that we have between sports and movies, all the entertainment we have with Netflix, all the entertainment that we have, all the things to keep us busy, are we quick to listen to the word of God? Someone once said, Lead with your ears, follow with your tongue, and let your anger straggle alone in the rear. He's writing to believers here, brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters. Be quick to hear. Paul put it in this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this reason... We also thank God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you have heard from us, you welcomed it as the word, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works in you who believe. Graduates, friends, family, one of the first things that we can do as we leave this place, always be ready to receive the word of God. Always be ready to receive the word of God. James is pressing in here that we should be quick to listen, to receive the word of God. Paul reminds us that we should welcome it as a friend. Wherever you go, receive it as a welcome friend. When God speaks through his word, you make sure it matches up with his word, and you receive it as a welcomed friend. No matter if that's chiseling away something in your life, no matter if that's reaffirming something in your life, again, it comes from the word of God, receive it as a a friend. See, this is in stark contrast to what Jesus was talking about with the disciples, not the disciples rather, but the uh, Pharisees. As he was talking to the Pharisees, you remember they heard these things. In Matthew 13, verse 13, they heard these things, but they didn't listen to them. Listen to what Jesus said. That is why I speak to them in parables, because looking they do not see, in hearing they listen and they do not understand. Looking, they do not see. Hearing, they do not listen or understand. I wonder how many sermons you've sat in, sir. How many church services services you've been in, ma'am, where the word of God has been faithfully declared, but yet it's fallen on ears that simply will not listen or will not seek to understand. See, Jesus tells us this in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Happy, blessed? You want to be blessed? You want to have a happy and blessed life? Here it is. Here it is, Ryan, right here. One verse. Happy and blessed are those who hear the word of God, and say it with me, and keep it. You hear the word of God, and you keep it. You hear the word of God. You receive the word of God. You be quick to listen. That's the first thing. But also be slow to speak. Be slow to speak. Be careful in what you're saying. Proverbs 10 tells us in the multitude of words there is sin. You be careful in how much you're speaking. Be wise and discerning. Uh, Judge Rubenthal told me this one time. I asked him for some advice, and I said, hey, what advice would you give me? He said this. He said, just go around and act like every conversation you're having is being recorded. You know what? That is fantastic wisdom because Jesus said every idle word that you and I say we'll be held accountable for. Every word that we share, try to hone in even on what we are saying. Be slow to speak. Be careful in what we say. And then be slow to anger. Why be slow to anger? Why put this in here? Because if you are angry, you can hear nothing. It would shock you the amount of followers of Jesus and myself included in these past few weeks that would just walk through such anger and I couldn't hear anything. That God gives us the gift of repentance. And when we release those things, God begins to speak into our life once again. And I'm telling you, some of you need to release that anger today because you can hear nothing of the Spirit of God when you're filled with anger. Some of you need the gift of repentance today. 
where you simply acknowledge your sin and you turn to Jesus and you leave it and you be empowered by the very Holy Spirit of God. But it involves you being humble before the Lord. And, and that's what James speaks next. Therefore, we need to rid ourselves of all this moral filth. I love the word in the original language, moral filth. It's a fascinating word. It's, it actually is a word picture that we get of like disgusting earwax. Right? Pretty gross. But you say, you can't hear if your ears are stopped up. You, you can't hear. Remove, rid yourself of all of that. And the evil that is so prevalent and humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Be in this book. Graduate, be in this book. Kill the sin in your life or it will eat you up. Be in this book. Family members, be in this book. Eat this book as what Jeremiah the prophet said. Devote yourself to studying this book as the apostle said in Acts. Give yourself continuously to prayer in the ministry of the word is what Acts 6.4 says. Give yourself to this the implanted word, let it fall on receptive soil in your hearts. I love what Jesus shared in Matthew 13 about the parable of the sower. He said there's different kind of hearts in the room here. He said there's the hard heart. They will not receive the word. Is that you today? I will not receive it. That's the hard heart Jesus speaks of in Matthew 13. But then there's the shallow heart that's emotional, no depth to it. Then there's that crowded heart that Jesus refers to in Matthew 13. All that's lacking is repentance in that heart, just crowded with all the things of the world, lost priority and just needs repentance to set things right in that crowded heart. But then he lands on the fruitful heart. The one that receives and remains will be fruitful. I pray that's your heart today. Friends, if we gather anything from the book of James chapter 1 verses 19, 20, and 21, it's this, that we need to receive the word as a welcome friend in our life. Receive the implanted word, but also we need to respond to the word. And James speaks to that in James chapter 1 verse 22, that you would be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face. That word hearer, if you just circle it, underline it, mark it, it's a it's fascinating word. It's where we get our word audit. It's like when you go to college and then there are those folks who show up at the uh, class and they're really stressed out because they're trying to just cram for an exam. I'm not speaking from personal experience working really, really hard right there. And then there's those other people in the room that are super chill. They don't have any books. They're just sitting there enjoying every moment because what I found out was why they were so chill is they're just auditing the class. They're not required to do any of the homework. They're not required to do any of the tests. They can just simply sit in and audit, watch, listen. But as a follower of Jesus Christ, according to the half-brother of Jesus, he says that we are to be hearers, but not only hearers only, we're to be doers. You don't have the option to just be a hearer. You don't have an option to just audit the class. No, you, you walk through the trials and sufferings. Isn't that what he says in the first few verses? They'll come to you in various shades. They'll come to you in various trials and tribulations. They'll come in all different forms. But friends, we're hearers and doers. Remember, they're under such persecution. They're not in the sunshine here. They're not at the beach. They're walking through a very desolate time. They're walking through a very difficult time. And James is reminding them, you be a hearer, but also you be a doer. Remember, they don't have a copy of the scriptures like you and I have. Someone will pull out that scroll and read it, and it's as if James is saying to them, God's word is more important than your opinions and then when it falls on that soft receptive soil of the heart do what it says and you'll be blessed that, that's what he said you respond to it no matter the difficulty in your life they're in persecution 
They're in suffering. And he's saying, respond to it. Be a doer. Don't just audit this. But it's like that one who goes to a mirror. You know, the, the ministry has a mirror, and it's the perfect law of freedom. It's this book right here. And as you go to it, you'll see your natural face. I love that word. You'll see your own face. Such a cool word. It's where it's the Genesis face. It's the beginning face. It's when you wake up in the morning and you go look in the mirror and you think, ooh. We got a little work to do today. It's the original, it's the natural face where you and I see ourselves for our natural state. When you look into the perfect law of liberty, God sees the natural state and he just begins now with a submissive heart, begins to put it in order. The perfect law of liberty. You can look at verse 18 of the same chapter. He says it's the word of truth and it sets us free. The word of truth. We're living in a society that so desperately desires truth, are we not? And I'm so grateful God has given to us his word, which is truth, and it sanctifies us according to Jesus by his word, which is truth. See, we are to respond by not being a hearer only, but being a doer. And I love the way two men shaped my life in prayer, Daniel Henderson and Peter Lord. They were coupled together through seminary. I traveled with Daniel, but Peter Lord shared this statement that I want you to see. What we believe, we live by, and the rest is just religious talk. We must be doers as well. We must respond to the word, we hear and we do. And as I was preparing this message, I remember that 2012 song that was released in the End of the Light by Matthew West. You may remember this song called Do Something. And it goes like this. I'm not going to sing it to you. Uh, one of our deacons graciously reminded me that I pay you to preach, not to sing. So... I'll read it to you. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble now. Thought, how do we ever get so far down? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven and I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. If not us, then who? If not me and you. Right now, it's the time for us to do something. If not now, then when? Will we see an end to all the pain? Oh, it's not enough to do something. It's time for us to do something. I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet, but it's easier to say than to be. Live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves it's all right. Somebody else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of a life with no desire. I don't want to be a flame. I want to be a fire. I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'll do something. If it's not us, then who? If it's not me and you. Right now, it's the time for us to do something. Yes, it is. Come on. If not now, then when will we see the end to all this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. We are the salt of the earth. We are the city on a hill. We are never going to change the world by standing still. We won't stand still. Followers of Christ, graduates, family members, neighbors, friends, and associates, if not us, then who? If not me and you, right now, it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? Will we see an end to all the pain? 
It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. You remember when David and Goliath were in a battle? And all those men who were standing there, I mean, week after week, day after day, there was this giant hurling accusations at Israel's God, and then no one did anything. And Daniel came up on the scene, and he says, is there not a cause? This guy is hurling accusations at us, at our God. Is there not a cause to this? And David stepped up, and he had to do something about it. You remember this account? Three of you do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, the three of you are locked in. Can I ask you a question? Is there not a cause in our society right now? Is there not a cause on the issue of life for the followers of Christ to stand up and do something? If, is there not a cause for all the children right here in our community and just a little bit north of us in Atlanta who are being sold into select slavery? Is there not a cause for the body of Christ to rise up? Is there not a cause to help those in deep need and poverty? Is there not a cause for us to stand up and help the most vulnerable people in our society, those who need to be adopted, those who need to be brought into a loving Christian home? Is there not a cause for the body of Christ to step up? Is there not a cause for us as a body of Christ to do something? Is there not a cause for you to join a body like this right here and help reach its community with the gospel? Friends, there's a cause, and it's time for us to do something. Here's what we do. We receive the word as not as it came from man, but as it came from God. Paul said that, right? And then we respond to it. This is your chance to respond. I wonder if I'm talking to hard hearts today. Jesus said that he loved you and he demonstrated, well, Paul wrote of his love for you, that he demonstrated his love for you, that yet while we're sinners, Christ died for you. Maybe the do something right here in this very moment is you responding to the word of God saying, I need to be saved from my sins. I need to ask Jesus to come and rule and reign my heart because, friends, I realize today that God is saving me into a relationship with him because he loves me. Maybe that's your do something today. For others, he saved you, and one of the first things he asked you to do is to be baptized and follow him in believer's baptism. It'd be kind of foolish for me to stand here and say, follow the Lord and do all these great things if you're not willing to do the very first thing he asked you by simply just stepping in water and saying, this is a public demonstration of who I am in Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ that lives within me. It's that declaration. Have you been saying, I need to do that. I need to do that. I'm talking to you right now. Then you need to come forward and you say, I need to do this. Not because the pastor asked me to, but because the Lord Jesus Christ asked me to do that in Matthew chapter 28. Can you join this church family? Every Christian that belongs to the capital C church, the big church, ought to have a local church, a little C church. You ought to be connected. You ought to grow in the grace and knowledge in a faith community in Christ. Am I talking to you today? Do you need to come? Maybe there's another one here, Ryan, that Lord's been pricking at their heart as a student. Maybe you're an adult as well and said, I need to go into vocational ministry. God's been calling me to go into ministry. And I want to surrender to that today. I want to come and tell my church family, God's calling me to ministry. Maybe that's you today. God's calling me into the mission field. God's calling me to go and serve him. I don't know where you are, friend, but this I know. The word of God is the perfect law of liberty and it's a mirror and it sees our very hearts. And I wanna pray over you and I want you to be obedient. I want you to respond to how the Lord leads you in these next few moments. Would you bow with me? Father, I acknowledge today that you are the only one who can soften that heart. Your Holy Spirit is the only one that can redeem the soul. And God, I pray right now for the one who knows they need to be saved. They need to be saved from their sin. 
They need to be saved from themselves. They need to be saved from your future wrath. They need to be saved from eternity in hell. But Lord, I praise you. They need to be saved into a beautiful relationship with you. You're the one who fashioned us, formed us, knit us together in our mother's womb. Today, I pray that they find their greatest identity in who you say they are. And I pray they do something about it today by simply just calling upon you for salvation. Lord, you are faithful and just and willing to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. And Lord, today I pray that you would save. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen and sustain those who are in this room who need to follow you in believer's baptism. They need to identify that you are in them and they are in you. And Lord, I pray for those also in this room who need and they, they need to make this church their church home and grow in your grace and knowledge right here to be accountable to a body, to invest into a body, Lord, I pray for those who are wrestling with a call to ministry. Lord, that you call out the called ones right now. Lord, have your will and way in these next few moments. We'll be so very careful, so very still, not to take anything away from what your Holy Spirit is doing. Lord, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do in these next few moments. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Flat Creek Baptist Church. We pray that this service was a blessing to you. And if it was, we want to encourage you to share it to others so it could be a blessing to them. We want you to know.